Welcome back to the third and final session of Divya Drishti 2021. Before we begin the normal proceedings of the session, may I please invite Lieutenant General Dr. Rakesh Sharma, PVSM, UISM, AVSM, VSM retired for the special address. General Sharma, superannuated as Adjutant General of the Indian Army in 2017, the general commanded his battalion in the Northeast, an infantry brigade in Western Theatre. and an infantry division deployed on the line of control in the northern theater he has also commanded a corps in ladakh he was part of indian army training team in botswana he regularly writes on topics of national security strategic studies leadership and geopolitical issues he is currently distinguished fellow at clos general sharma please Can switch this off? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at the outset, uh, my grateful thanks to the director for inviting me for this talk today. I am uh, singularly honored. uh day for yesterday uh, two of us friends got together and spoke um, uh, jan gurmeet and self to decipher what does special and what does valedictory mean after one hour of discussion we couldn't find the meaning between, behind special and valedictory so we left it as as it is now <clears throat> thank you now war fighting concepts come and go only a few of them ever leave an impact on war fighting in fact most of the war fighting concepts die away immediately after the author who has written it dies himself a multi domain uh, operations as a concept is currently in fashion uh, in fashion in military parlance and it is still evolving as it was pointed out earlier it is they got a conceptual lack of clarity now i have no divya drishti that is no cosmic vision last person who i thought had cosmic vision was called sanjay in mahabharat who could rig up a television and inform dhritarashtra as what was happening on the battle so there has been no divya drishti thereafter <clears throat> but i do visualize that whether we like it or not don't like it there will be theater commands in times to come we can crib like hell but it's there on the anvil and for once the uh, the politicians have decided to call some veterans back to take on some theaters so the theater i'm going to talk about is the maritime theater which is being commanded by admiral anil chopra and what is he doing what is he doing presently he is fighting a serious cyber war on the peninsula and then thereafter after the cyber war is on he's also been involved into the naval and air air battle in the indian ocean and on these two seas in the flanking sea and he's planning an amphibious landing maneuver all together and this amphibious landing maneuver can be anywhere that he decides to do this is multi domain warfare and it's well, well within realms of imagination this could happen even tomorrow or could happen after 10 years that i think is multi domain warfare which we have to be prepared for time is to be ready get set and go but the idea certainly not original there have been domains of warfare existing earlier and firstly i must state that multi domain operation the way it has come up from united states in last 4 years is a war fighting concept it is not a political and geo economic concept it's a concept which involves largely war fighting so the domains have collaborated or clashed in history the sea and the air the air and this and the land and the sea and all these have been uh, um, ushering in some kind of multi domain warfare in uh, earlier times also later on the race to space started as the date was shown 1957 onwards the ra race to space started and today there are advances in computing power which are re revolutionizing our ability to harness technological excess across the electromagnetic spectrum 
I wish to talk today of a seven construct multi domain war. And by the time I end, I will drop back to six and I'll justify why. So, in my opinion, uh, this seven construct multi domain is amalgamates the physical and the virtual domains of land, air, maritime, space, cyberspace, electromagnetic spectrum, and human stroke cognitive domain. Why do we call a domain a domain? There was a definition given in the morning saying that this is a domain. Uh, we have seen many domains which been brought about since morning. A uh, very large number of them are very constricted view of domains. Why would we call a domain a domain? There was a definition given out in the morning, but I, uh, being a Gurkha officer, would like to oversimplify as to what does it mean by a domain. So historically, the physical domains are well understood, the, the ground, air and sea. And their re relevance is, requires no de uh, definition. The inclusion of space and the virtual domains of cyberspace and electromagnetic spectrum and their synergizing requires analysis. Now, indeed, the, the newer concepts need to demonstrate if there is a new concept which in, is included in the domain of warfare, there is a need to understand why that domain has been included as a separate domain per se. So, I am over simplifying it to say that to become a domain, domain that particular item must have operational action which is part or even separate from other domains and whose access and control is vital to the freedom of operations and also essential for the success of mission. The domains that we wish to include, are they all independent domains on their own right in which they can lead on a battle and finish by their domains alone without getting involved into even the physical domains? That would become the important part of a, what is a domain. So as it is apparent, electromagnetic spectrum transcends everything today. <clears throat> beyond the borders, it's beyond the boundaries. There are very large number of electronic devices deployed from a basic radio operator to a missile that crosses um, electronic warfare sets to satellite sensors. Everything passes through electromagnetic spectrum. Space assets, as has been spoken of, provide <clears throat> the means to communicate, conduct the PNT, as was spoken earlier, the positioning, navigation and timing precision strikes, empower intelligence, ISR capabilities. So space also facilitates monitoring of launch detection, missile tracking, all is space. And cyberspace is well understood, it is embedded and is in operation in all domains of military warfare. Hence, each one of these domains can independently take on the responsibility of fighting in that domain. Estonia, only cyberspace had a remain change. You know, it required no land, no sea, no air, and it could achieve it. So then that becomes an independent domain of warfare. <coughs> Hence, space, electromagnetic spectrum, and cyberspace domains have become imperative part of military operations, and they provide strategic and operational tactical advantage to our armed forces. If the idea is not new, and it has been there from antiquity, we are shown 2000 years ago that they were multi domain warfare. Then is it old wine and new bottles? And why are we climbing up this tree? Is it, it is going to be one more domain or one more thought process that will come and die away in no time. It's all possible. It is because the technology has changed the domains of warfare and has gone beyond the physical domains. Now, in the 60s, the number of transistors in an integrated circuit was two. Now, miniaturization has trans, uh, of a transistor has enabled billions of transistors to be emplaced in a single wafer thin integrated chip the size of a nail. And the computing power is doubling every 18 months. And this is going on continuously. So, the quantum of change on technology happening in the course of last few couple of years is tremendous. Let me take the issue further by asking two quintessential posers. First, what do we prognosticate about the future warfighting environment and the operating environment? And second, if we accept that these domains are here to stay, how do we make the domain seamless and integrate so that the sum of all this is larger 
then the potential of individual of these domains together first about the futuristic war fighting uh, environment a northern adversary as we are aware is preparing for all these domains he has configured himself in that manner to fight in all these domains separately cumulated with the information environment <clears throat> for him the extended battle space is hyperactive it is lethal and is strategically complex the western adversary on the other hand is readily readily uh, exploiting armed conflict below the threshold of conventional war making deterrence most challenging conclusively the two adversaries have leveraged the trends to expand the battlefield in time blurring distinction between peace and war in domains like space cyberspace and information and in geography from the disputed borders to the hinterland and thereby creating a series of tactical operational and strategic standoffs indeed both these adversaries are grossly different when we talk about domains of warfare but when they collude in a manner then they can use all these capabilities collectively together now as new technologies mature and military application become clearer well there is likely to be larger impact apparently the lack and i'm talking about us now the lack of access in one domain or lack of expertise in one domain that they possess can have cascading effect on our operations in all other domains this consequences of domain interdependence has forced a complex continuum of domains that will dominate future military operations now to win tomorrow we must evolve how we organize and integrate the army as a whole as a joint force and create a continuum of all of these domains together second how do we manage to make this domain seamless and integrate in the indian context of future war fighting there are four pathways that we wish to take on one is that we have to accept even today in a discussion there is a lack of acceptance on the importance of virtual domains as independent domains which can fight a war there is a reluctance here first is the policy makers and thinkers must establish for themselves that these domains exist and they are overriding importance of an overriding importance now with advances in the space cyberspace and ems the war fighting domains of physical domain the traditional domains of air sea and land become dependent on these now we have in the army at least in the army and i am not wanting to venture into navy and air force have been talking about transformation for so long we can today uh, have a seminar today and talk military domain operations but what happens to the previous ones that we have they are all lying in some quite beautiful cupboards un unaddressed and unopened so when we talk about transformation it's the policy makers which i say must uh, address the issue firstly some of this can be attributed to natural resistance to top down concepts otherwise we will this uh, this seminar will also become obscure in times to come our major, major difficulty is to exploring future concepts while keeping ourselves intimately involved in the current ones so the current ones take so much of time for us that we wish to forget the futuristic futuristic concepts and pass them away it is imperative that the nation and the military must strengthen our ability to respond and escalate a conflict across virtual domains one must accept that a beginning has to be made the complexity of the integrated military operations across domains for laying down a foundation must lay down a foundation to operational doctrines which is our current warfare concepts which are for the future and a strategy to achieve those concepts that should become the first part and parcel of of multi domain warfare two it is vital to delineate capabilities of what we want we talk about herculean issues from hypersonics to satellite warfare to everything we want amalgamated together and we want that to be available to us in the earliest time frame it's earthly not possible after seeing the last budget 
that you can have all these capabilities that we talk about in multi domain warfare we can't get them it is impossible that's the writing on the wall earlier we read it the better it is so we must delineate mandatory capabilities and plans required and plan their acquisition accordingly we ought to accept that to designate this the virtual domains as priority there has to be a synergy between the physical war fighting domains so that and without going overboard ensure that the adversary's use of space ems and cyberspace will should not significantly disrupt or uh, degrade our military operations in physical domains with the proliferation of inexpensive space and cyberspace technologies we just have to find the right measure of inexpensive technologies i dare say we can also do similar operations and disrupt any adversary in times to come once identified and accepted an institutional process is mandatory to put all these together and require reforms if we allow our imagination to go wild then it will be impossible to delineate and get anything worthwhile third what about field formations we talk at this level we don't talk about field formations and units which are combating here which have little relevance to multi domain operations except for the purpose of preparing for examinations at field formation levels military commanders have to fathom how interference or attack in the virtual domains can impact and constrict their ability to operate and with freedom and respond at will now this requires much appreciation as to how field commanders will be affected by it they can be case in point can be a communications degraded or a electromagnetically dis disabled environment can a formation commanders independently function on his own this is a fluctuate fluctuating capability how does he bank a formation commander bank on whom to to learn on as to how to fight a battle in which his virtual domains have been severely degraded by an adversary which is well nigh possible even today let me state that there will be times when this has been to be experimented and trained for that we have to prepare for a for times when there will be weaker domains functional in in the field formation level and multiple op options have to be presented there will be peaks there will be times of peak convergence when the force commanders can utilize a uh, larger amount of capabilities so we have to leverage at a beck and call the domain that gives us the maximum facility at a particular time for that that field commander requires to know what is the effect of its happen, the uh, laxity of a domain is having on him or what is his uh, offensive use of a domain is having on the adversary all this has to be available to him on a platter otherwise a time would come that he will not know how to fight a war maybe maybe this thought which was given in the morning somebody spoke about what about task forces do we require a task force uh, at a field formation level because finally that's the cutting edge delhi is not the cutting edge of warfare that cutting edge requires some task forces which facilitate him to combine the effect of the virtual domain so that he can use the physical domain to his best advantage otherwise time would come he'll not even be able to use the facet uh, assets of the air air power in in discharge of his responsibility because of the increase in the virtual domains and lastly the fourth point that i want to raise is that there are two key domains of cyberspace and electromagnetic activities larger number of people have been written in fact an excellent article written by an author in orf about a year and a half ago said we and he refers to indian army more than anything else he says we are the only ones who talk cyberspace separately and electromagnetic spectrum separately electronic warfare people have nothing to do with the cyberspace people while all other armed forces have combined these two into one as a whole and fight together that is why you heard the uh, mr riley in the morning he did not talk about cyberspace as a domain of warfare he said electromagnetic spectrum neither did air marshal uh, chopra spoke about cyberspace because air force has managed to combine many things together 
Indian Army wants a major general to head the uh, earlier one uh, EW and a major general to head the cyberspace, and they say we can't merge it because HR takes super, supersedes the issue of operational requirement. A EW team deployed a few kilometers from the forward line of troops to access its target increases the risk of attack. If the target can be accessed through a wired network, a cyber team can nearly instantaneously employ effects in the safety of thousands of kilometers away from the battlefield. Such ability to exploit EW and cyberspace together I mean, they will be able to take immense advantage and it will lead to a success of the land operations. This may be difficult today currently because of the limited data availability on the current tactical networks. And the challenges our adversary, especially the northern adversary, is going to impose on us on these fronts. As a theta commands are established and land, sea and air integrate, hopefully, despite the articles being published hereafter, we will also require better automation in times to come, autonomous systems based on quantum computing, etc., etc., to bring it all together. Let me add a caveat here. For the field formations, it is imperative that they have battlefield awareness. It is absolutely imperative. But that battlefield awareness should not be at the cost of loss of mobility, of loss of maneuver like for a mechanized formation, just for the purpose of battlefield awareness reaching where mechanized formations have reached does not mean that mechanized formations are held back into their task. That will make them lose windows of advantage or windows of opportunity. So there has to be a matchup between these domains. It may however be feasible to utilize immobile communication infrastructure for largely ground fixated formations and long-range fire units to advantage them of and avail of the formations. Now, uh, it is apparent that, and I'm ending here, the multi-domain operations come after jointness. And we have just about put half a foot forward into jointness. We have miles to go on jointness. How do we talk about multi-domain operations when we are not even getting joint? And we are having great resistance to getting joint. We are actually groping along. Do we first absorb jointness in all forms and then take on multi domain operations or do a hop, step, and jump? All this while, we have to think as to there's an adversary who is also going leaps and bounds, and they will create more domains of warfare in times to come, which we do not know about. We have to do a hop, step, and jump plan what we can take on at this time or in times to come, five years, ten years. That will be the crux. I've left the human domain and the cognition part of, of uh, war fighting. It is relevant. It is, doesn't reflect only on the human resource and the human domain of the armed forces. It refers to human domain of the public at large, which is being affected by the informational domain or uh, informational uh, offenses being carried out. So the human domain is actually the crux on the center of which all the other domains lie. And we have to actually work at the uh, at the uh, this particular domain. Let me sum up here. Multi-domain op operations conceptualize bringing jointness from the apex. And we have to plan from the strategic to the tactical level, all of them together and communicate and coordinate, co coordinate directly with other domains. Our planners must endeavor to converge the cyberspace, EMS, and physical domains to leverage all available means to attack enemy networks and ultimately execute two multi-domain operations. It's essential that we get on with this task of whether this issue is going to last long or some new philosophy will come across is immaterial. The point is that the electromagnetic spectrum, cyberspace, and space are here to live with the with the uh, tangible domains of air, sea, and land. And better we get on with us with it, the earlier the better it is. And it is especially for for the army because I think we are left behind. I finish here to say that with due respects to the air defense, despite the air defense command coming up, 
our air defense resources and akashthir comes from bdl and the air force akashthir uh, air force i triple scs whatever they call it with jargons comes from bel there is no possibility of both be talking to each other and you know to talk to each other it requires i think some budget somebody dropped me say 7 to 8000 crores to just start these two air defense system talking to each other blue and blue that's the answer this, this will happen if if the air force could hit its own aircraft at at shrinagar whatever the rationale may be whoever is punished in material the fact is that there is just no matching of communication between services and we are talking about virtual domains let's pull up our socks thank you sir may i request at the class to come over to the stage to present a memento to general rakesh sharma Let's go, Lydia. Let's.